Welcome back to Jeff Kinege live here at Citizen Television with the Grand Mula. By the way, Grand Mula, you said a moment ago about um, Central Kenya, Kimani Ishungwa. Moshimiwa. Yes, yes. He's on Twitter saying, I couldn't agree more with Ahmed Nasir. Central Kenya has no foolish people. And a parliamentary system with the current disproportional representation is a no no. Um, it's not rocket science. I mean, if you go parliamentary system, the numerical advantage they do they enjoy in a presidential system will completely disappear. I mean, I mean you can't create 120 uh, constituencies or members of parliament in central Kenya. It's not possible. I mean, Kambu will have 60. You will be an MP yourself. <laughs> <laughs> That's not possible. So, the, if if the I mean, I have no problem because I think. You know, people, someone from Northern Kenya may have a better chance to become a prime minister than someone from Central Kenya. But if you look at from a narrow ethnic interest, Central Kenya's interest, in my view, lies in having a presidential system. Because when you put 5.5 billion votes, I mean, you're yeah. much ahead than anybody By else. By the way, there's a census that's going to be coming later this year, and um, the Somalis may uh, just be catching up on Central. <laughs> You're laughing. You're laughing like you know something we don't. No, no, no. I think that's. A, well, let's wait for the census. I mean, people think that may n the number, the, the numbers in Northern Kenya will reduce, but I think that, you know, the informed guess is that their numbers will increase, not because of Somali refugees or anything. No. But I mean, Somalis marry a lot of. Somalis have a lot of kids, you know, by family. Absolutely. Yes. Four, five, plus. Six, seven, eight. <laughs> Grand Willa, let's go back to the Western Hotel. And yes. you said something like... Uh, no, no, I, I, I was telling you that, I mean, I have no instructions from the Deputy President, but I think I can persuade him that, you know, if everybody who has taken land, according to... I mean, even if we implemented the Ndungu report, eh, and everybody who has taken land in a manner not provided for the law since 1963 returns, I don't think the Deputy President will have a problem with that, despite... You know, the enormous cost and loss, but let it apply to every person in Kenya. So, from, uh, from Mandera to Voi, from Lodwa to Mombasa. If we have that, I think it will be a fantastic thing. So are you saying he shouldn't return the land because others haven't? No, no, but, you know, Kenya, I, what, what I have a problem is, you know, this idea of targeting someone because he is Ruto or because he is Jeff or because he is this... Let us have rules that apply across the board to everybody without any discrimination. You think he's being targeted uh, unfairly? I mean, Ruta is not the first person who bought property that was taken by someone. I mean, everybody in this country has a title deed that has some question marks. Who doesn't have? You have. I don't. You must. I, I don't. I don't. I, okay. I don't. You don't have land? No. In Kambu? <laughs> it, it doesn't belong to me. Yes, yes, but I'm saying, I mean, the point I'm making is land in Kenya is problematic. And there's a lot of land that was acquired during the crazy years of the Moi regime in the 90s. So if we make this consensus, national consensus, that let us all return this land so that we have playgrounds, you know, in South Sea, in Lavaton, in everywhere, well, so that we have public... There's no problem. But Paul, let it be across the board. Paul Mugambi has just said, uh, he's quoted something in Latin. He says, Nemo dat quote non abet, which means you cannot sell what you do not have. Grand Mullah, how does that work in the Western case? You see, my, the law applies. If you, are, if, you, if, you, if you get this, if you get the land as the first person, you will always, the, the land will always be taken against you. But if a, sec, a third party buys from you, we call them innocent purchaser for value. So he gets a clean title, notwithstanding the bad title of the first person. That's the law. So in, in the deputy president's case, did he acquire it legally? Yes. L legally? Legally, yes. Not, there, there may be a moral question. There's a moral question. I understand where people are coming from. There is that moral question. Because this land originally, I mean, there was some small workshop for Kenya Civil Aviation Authority. Mm -hmm. But so there's a moral question. But if I'm legalistic, you know, the black letter law, then 
It's no problem. Okay, you talk about the deputy president being targeted or individuals being targeted. Do you think he's being uh, un unfairly targeted in the war on corruption? Oh, I haven't heard much about I mean, nobody has targeted him, but you know this. You see, everybody supports the war on corruption, and that's why I'm saying that, you know, there's too much talk with little action, and that's why, you know, Kenyans must now do the necessary part in terms of action. And I'm glad I was hearing somewhere that my good friend, uh, Professor Makam Mutua, mm. may run for president. You, heard, you saw that? Yes, yes. So that's what we want. We want, you know, I mean, Macau talks a lot. But we want him to show us, in case he runs in <laughs> 2022, yeah. that he means business. And these people who, you know, the liberals, what I call the liberal Kenyans, and they are very few. They are more tribal than liberal. Mm -hmm. At least we'll have a candidate of their own. Yes. <laughs> Tell me something. If Professor Makawa Mutua were to run, what are his chances? You know, it's good to try. Let's see how, I mean, I mean, I think, he, I, I think it's important for people like Professor Macau, you know, who have so much promise or who make so much noise on certain issues, you know, to try their ideas into the Kenyan body politic and see the results for themselves. Well, at, at the same time, one can argue Miguna Miguna ran for president. He makes noise on certain issues. Muguna, does, Muguna shouts, he doesn't make noise. There's a distinction between making noise and shouting. He shouts. <laughs> <laughs> what is the distinction? No, I mean, you make noise. I mean, no, noise is like... I mean, when we say someone makes noise, it's like, I mean, he, he, he makes a constant point in a certain discourse, you know. Mm. I mean... Uh, when Makao Mutua talks, he's, I mean, he's a rational guy, he's a professor, he talks sense. Uh, Muguna doesn't make that sense, you know. You, you've always said that this fight against corruption, it seems like it's not heading anywhere. We're losing the fight. Look at today, Samburu, two billion Kenya shillings. That's just one county. There are other governors being sought, apparently, allegedly. What do you think about this war on corruption? Are we losing it? No, no, but you see, when did we say we are fighting corruption? I mean, this is, I mean, there's a lot of noise about, you know, corruption, but you see, corruption needs more than this, you know. I mean, if we want to fight corruption, we fight corruption. What is the starting point of fighting corruption? You know, that's a very difficult doctrinal question. When do, I mean, how far do we go back? Do we leave the corruption of the 60s? Do we start now? Do we start? But you see, you can't fight corruption. You have to fight corruption when you know that the police can do proper investigation. And there's a question mark on that. Because I am a lawyer and I do a lot of, nowadays I do, I, I never used to do, but lawyers, you know, we are coming back to the, the criminal bar. The investigation is very poor. The prosecution is very poor. The defense is very good, so you can't fight corruption. So, so, so you don't, you don't, you don't think the, the the new sheriffs in town are doing a good job, DPP and DCI? I think the jury is out. We will see by December what how, how well how 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 well how good they're doing in December because by December quite a number of cases that have been in court will be concluded, and uh, from what I hear, I don't think the result will be that. The judiciary has been accused of being the weak link in the fight against corruption, is it? No, no. It's not, you see, it's not the business of the judiciary to help the executive fight corruption. That's not the job of the judiciary. And sometimes I wonder when I see the chief just saying that, you know, we will play our role. The judiciary can play its role by being efficient, by being, you know, by disposing cases quickly. But in terms of the accused person and the government, the judiciary is neutral. The judiciary doesn't give a damn whether an accused person is convicted or acquitted. It has no interest in the case. If someone is acquitted, he is acquitted because there was no evidence. If someone is convicted, it's because there was evidence. The judiciary is a disinterested party. Yeah, but recently you saw the Chief Justice transferring judges from the High Court and the Court of Appeal. Was this in relation to what was being said about the judiciary being the weak link? Do you no, think? no, no, but you see, I've tweeted that. I th I, the, you know, the Chief Justice's job, it's not the work of the Chief Justice to please the President. If the President or someone in the executive is unhappy, about the judge 
giving orders against the government or upholding the constitution, the Chief Justice should clap for that judge, not transfer him. So do you think the Chief Justice was pressured to do those transfers? you think he was pressured from above? I mean, I don't have that empirical evidence, but my guess is as good as yours. What do you think? Why were there some lawyers who were dissatisfied with, uh, with the transfers? I was myself. I mean, I... Um, yeah, amongst them you. Yes, yes. Um, we don't want, you know, I mean, when a judge, when a judge makes a name for himself, for example, in, a, in, in a one division of the court, he gives progressive jurisprudence, he upholds the rule of law, he stops the government from doing this, he stops this. I mean, that's a good judge. I mean, uh, the judges who have been transferred by the Chief Justice, both the, this transfer and the last transfer, yeah. were excellent judges. Mm. I mean, let us see the judges. I mean, we know the judges he has brought, some of them. I mean, I think Kenyans will be disappointed. Yeah, one, one in particular you were disappointed with was uh, Chacha Mwita. You were disappointed that he was transferred. You were pissed off. Why? No, no, Chacha, I know he was my classmate. Someone I know, I mean, he was doing an excellent job. I mean, if you look at the... Case, I, I mean, if you look at, you know, if you look at how productive he was, how progressive he was, uh, my view is that every time you rule against the government in a country like Kenya, every time you stop the executive, you are correct. Every time. That, I mean, it is, that's the rule. Mm. Every time you pander to the government, every time you allow the government to go on what it wants, you are a poor judge and you are getting it wrong. But let's face it, some of you hotshot lawyers are used to being in a room with judges you're familiar with. No, it's not true. I mean... Oh, you prefer certain judges? No, it's not true. I mean, I mean, Chacha, I know Chacha, we were classmates. I was in the JC when we recruited him. I've never appeared before him. I've never done a case before him. Yes. You were just disappointed that... Uh, no, no, I was happy because... In terms of his, uh, his interpretation of the Constitution, in terms of the jurisprudence in terms of, you know, his philosophy of the law, he was a very progressive judge. And that's the kind of judge we want. Mm. I mean, if you look at uh, Motivo, Justice Motivo was yeah. before him. He was doing an excellent job. I mean, those are the judges. I mean, if you look at Odunga, people think they're anti-government, they are radicals. It's the, I mean, they just allow the constitution to talk to Kenyans. Yes. And there's nothing much people can do about that. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Gramula, I can't let you go without asking you about the handshake. Your thoughts? It's, it's almost a year into the handshake. Is it working? I don't know. You know me, I'm not in politics. I'm... But you have an opinion. You're a Kenyan. No, no, but uh, I mean, what is the, we were not told what the handshake is. You know, We were not told uh, what are the parameters. What, what is the handshake about? We just see the president and Raila together. And uh, I think that's okay. We have no problem with that. But you know, in terms of the internal dynamics, we don't know. Nobody has told us. Yeah, but when you see the president and Raila together, you see Ruto kind of being aged out. You know, Ruto holds a constitutional office. I mean, if it was the old days, I mean, uh, the president could have fired him, but he can't fire him. He has the mandate of the Kenyan people. Uh, the handshake is more of a friendship. It's not a legal framework. It has no basis in law. I mean, it's... And the handshake survives because of the benevolence of Uhuru. Yeah. Yes. Um, if, but you, like you said, if it was the days of Arab Moy, deputy would have been long gone. Yes, yes. It would have been history. <laughs> he would have gone back to Sigoy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Has a, what about in terms of stability? A year later? No, no, it's good. I mean, the country is stable, you know. But you see, the country is stable because there's no opposition. That's the flip side of the handshake. Yeah. I mean, there's no checks and balance. Mm. I mean, Uhuru is the most powerful president Kenya ever had. More powerful than his father, more powerful than Moi, more powerful than Kipaki because he can do what he wants. And yet he seems to be held hostage by those around him. I don't know that, but he's so powerful. He can do so much. He can, you know, like Trump said, he can go to Fifth Avenue and shoot people. Uru can come to State House and shoot people and nobody will do anything. Uh, I mean, the opposition will clap for him because there is no opposition. I mean, I mean, they're scrambling to it from his blood. Yeah. Yes. And that, that's the flip side of stability. There's no checks and balances. I mean, Uru is so powerful, he can shut down this country and everybody will clap for him. And he's the one who's cannibalized this opposition? 
uh, that's one way. I think he didn't, I th they also defected on their own, you know, surely. I mean, look at the scramble. I mean, Raila, he has done a deal with Raila. I, I meet my friend Watengula and I tell him, you know, why don't you take over the opposition? Why don't you just show us how powerful you, why don't you call for demonstration, for example? Why don't you try to shut down central, the CBD, mm. so that people give you some credence, some people give you some credit, you know? What did he say? What can he organize, you know, you know? I mean, he can't call 100 people into CBD. I'm sure if he's watching, he will pick a quarrel with me tomorrow. <laughs> but isn't that the reality? <laughs> that, now, apart, that apart from Raila, yes. nobody else can call a demonstration or a crowd. I mean, give Raila his credit, you know. He's a man with some gravitas. Yeah. There's no opposition leader. Look at, look at the space gap in in Kenya. And that's why probably, you know, Professor Macau is seeing an opportunity he can mm. fill because nobody, I mean, Raila has joined the government and everybody is trying to beg or plead with Raila to take with him the government. <laughs> Including Kalonzo now, <laughs> who's inside the tent. Uh, but he's, he's not inside the tent, he's peeping. <laughs> <laughs> what about... The man who calls himself the official opposition leader, Ekuru Alkot. No, I'll give him credit. I think he got the 1.3 million vo uh, signatures. Ekuru has done a fantastic job in terms of trying to change the constitution. I mean, he has come with great ideas on how to limit. Uh, you know, this is a very expensive and expansive government. And getting 1.3 million Kenyans, you know, to support your referendum initiative is very good. Mm. I think he has done very well. I'm, I'm really happy for him. I'm really happy. Yeah? Yes. Okay, what about uh, what we saw very recently? Executive order number one. We almost have someone who is a chief minister, a man who all the CSs have to report to now, Dr. Fred Matiangi. Your thoughts? No, no, you see, I mean, I mean, the president is in charge of the executive. He can always reorganize it. And I think the deputy president, I mean, Fred is a good friend of mine. He's a nice guy, very hardworking, you know, very sober, very effective. I mean, one hell of a guy, very, I mean, fantastic. He will do a good job. I mean, uh, when he was in the education ministry, he did well. When he was in land, he did well. When he was in ICT, he did well. I mean, OP is too expensive, is too expensive and big, but I'm confident he will do very well. Is he a good presidential material? Yes, yes, why not? He is, he is, he is, he is. When Uhuru told us uh, not too long ago that he, he, to Tashanga, we will be surprised. Could this be the surprise? I don't know when he, when he wants to run or when he may be told to run. But Fred is, Fred, is, Fred, is, Fred is a guy with vision. Fred is a guy with focus. Fred is a guy with energy. Can Matiangi beat Ruto? I don't know. It depends on them. Even I can beat many people, you know. It depends on the dynamics. It depends on who is pushing you, who is sponsoring you, who is funding you, <laughs> a lot of things. Yeah. Even you, you have potential. Me? Absolutely. Oh, for what? President. <laughs> Some people like uh, Kotu Secretary General Francis Atwoli uh, have said that President Kenyatta is too young to retire, that they, we need to extend his term or give him something. What do you think? That's, you know, this idea of uh, the two-term limit is very important. And uh, let's not go the way, you know, some West African countries have gone. Why, why so far? Why not next door? Which one? Uganda. I mean, Uganda is a unique case, you know. I mean, Uganda, I mean, uh, Museveni came through the parallel of the gun, and I think he still rules through the parallel of the gun. I mean, this constitution is just a veneer of... But we are different. We are not Uganda. I mean, uh, we took 20 years to write our constitution. We are proud. I mean, we are one of the best democracies in... The best democracy in Eastern Central Africa and one of the best in Africa. We have a very good constitution. This idea of... Uh, Doing away with the two term limit is a lot of bullshit. <laughs> yes. So he should go home in 2022? Absolutely. I mean, Uhuru has done well. He has served for 10 years. Uh, he has done a lot for his country. He has won two elections. We are happy for him what he has done. But after, after his two term, he should retire. Why not? There's a talk of a Putin scenario. He becomes prime minister, Raila becomes president. I don't know about that, but I mean, let us see. But my view is that let us have two term. Serving your country for 10 years, you know, is an amazing achievement. You mm. know, you Speaking of two terms, governors with term limits. Let's talk about extending it beyond a second term. 
What do you think? No, Those no, who have served two no, terms no, now? We should have our two term. It's a good, it's a good governance mechanism that when you serve two terms, 10 years is a lot. I mean, if you are governor for 10 years and you have done nothing, or if you are governor for 10 years and you have not stolen enough, I mean, too bad. You can't steal the third term mm -hmm. what you have not stolen the last 10 years. So most of these governors, you know, they're just thieves. They just want to steal. But they have, I mean, they're, they're rich, you know. There's no governor who is poor. Mm. That's why we are saying, you know, this issue of corruption, nobody's serious about it. Because you see your next door neighbor so rich. And nobody's asking him, you know, come, how did you get this? After two terms, what should they do, Grand Mola? Should they move to the Senate? Already one has declared that they no, want but to. Why don't they go to business? Why don't they? Some of them are lawyers. Why don't they practice? Some of them are doctors. Some of them are, I mean, isn't their life after two terms, Governor? Isn't their life? Of course there's life. They're used to the power. They're used to being in the trough. They're used to being close to where the eating is. But that's the problem we have. I mean, that's, the, that's a cultural problem that, you know, you have to be in one form of government or another for you to make money. There's many other ways of making money. I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of money in the private sector. Mm. Let them go to the private sector. Before we go to tweets, I've got to ask you real quick. Nurses strike, government says, can't pay, won't pay, there's no money. I mean, I don't, I mean, I, I'm not very familiar with this nurses strike, but you know, I mean, it's a constitutional right to strike. I mean, it's, we have, we, you know, we are liberal democracy. We are constitutional democracy. People can strike when they want. But it's always good to sit down together and, you know, reach a middle ground. There is no problem that you cannot sort through negotiations. Yeah, but the president is saying there's no money. Is the government broke? But let him raise taxes. You know, that's the way to raise huh? money. <laughs> let him oh, raise taxes. Oh, oh, Graham Mueller, man. I mean, we're already paying through our noses. No, no, I don't mind if we, re I mean, I don't think, I don't think Kenyans will mind if you add, you know, 2% to 3% tax for us to have nurses with decent salaries. As long as you don't steal, you know. Yeah. Yes. Coming back to the, coming back to the governors, sh what, what should Mutua, Joho, Kivuda, Kivwana, Oparanya, what should they do after 2022? But what were they doing before? What was Mutua doing before he became a governor? What was he? He was government spokesman and he was doing that, that uh, TV Let, series. <laughs> he, can do, he can go back there. Cobra Squad. <laughs> yes, you know, you know, the way you are talking is like, this is entitlement. It's not an entitlement. I mean, these guys were something before they became these governors. Yeah. I mean, Professor Kibana was teaching at the university. He can go back to the university. I'm sure he may consider that. Uh, could he be president? Could he make president? I think he could make a good president, yes. yes. So him, Matiangi, Ruto, who else? There are many Kenyans, you know. Many. Mutua. Mutua. Yeah, yes. Professor. Yes. Let's read some sweets. Uh, Grand Mula, what do you think? Monica, are we good? Jay Masinde says the Grand Mula has also been sued by Harvey, Nelson Harvey, on allegations he is not qualified and forged the pupillage certificates. What is his take on this? You know, Harvey was my student. I don't want to recollect, I don't want to remark his exam, but I, I retain that residual power. I remember him sitting in my class, you know, someone very unremarkable. Yes. <laughs> you remember but, this student who was unremarkable? Yes, yes, making all this kind of abuse. But I think it, I mean, I think he's aspiring to be me. Yeah. And it's good for my students to aspire to be their teachers. <laughs> I'm proud of that. <laughs> they want to be you when they grow up. But I mean, I taught a lot. I mean, I taught for 12 years and uh, I taught a lot of good students who have become some even better than me. Like who? N name one or two. There are many, there are many. The, but Ekuro was my student, uh -huh. of course, and I'm proud of him. But Havi is so inconsequential, even as a lawyer. The only thing is, he, he has made a name by abusing me, that's all. And, and it shows how low his ambition is. Yeah, you don't abuse your teacher? Not that, I mean, you can make your own name, but he will never, have you ever seen him tweet without mentioning Ahmed Nasir? No. Yes. But your tutelage certificate is? 
Absolutely. I mean, uh, it's a stupid thing, I tell guys. <laughs> it's a four, you know, a privilege when I did is four months. And when you are in a class, you, the whole class moves together. And we moved it, 150 of us. Yes. Some people thought I skipped the privilege and went to Cornell. But I, I didn't. I finished the privilege and then went to Cornell and come back. But you don't say? I don't have, those are stupid things for me to address. <laughs> then, Googie, Googie yeah. got there. Gugi Gadu says, even though some of Supreme Court judges may be incompetent, comparing them to second-year law students is not only demeaning to the office they hold, but also the judiciary and, by extension, the legal fraternity. You know, our Supreme, I mean, I mean, as someone who was part of that enterprise, I mean, it's unfortunate. We have, we have, we have, I mean, you know, we, the judiciary needs to be fixed. We need one more final solution. And I think Kenyans need to sit together and see one final solution. And I tell Kenyans, you know, when, when Kibaki was president and he had this 1997 presidential election, he went to court in the Court of Appeal and they mistreated him so, well, so badly. And his lawyer was Orengo and he stood up and he said, you know, this guy was a former president. He didn't win. But one day he may become a powerful man and address these issues. And they laughed at him. Kibaki became president. And the first thing he did was radical surgery in 2003. Mm. So it's when you see the justice system and you go through it, then you understand how bad this is. Is it time for radical surgery again? No, no, we have We need something more draconian than radical surgery, you know, something more draconian. Like what? <laughs> we need an, uh, I think Kenyans need to meet in bombers eh, and discuss how to fix the judiciary. Hmm. Yes. It's not very easy. Eh? No, no. Uh, Mercy Wangai, Wangai says, what is Grand Mullah's take on Huduma number and the threat for withdrawal of government services for taxpayers? I think uh, India started something close to these things in terms of, you know, putting all your information in a, in a card. Yeah, MasterCard. Yes, it went up to the Supreme Court and uh, the Supreme Court of India stopped it because it says it's an infringement on the right to privacy. Uh, I think very soon there will be a proper challenge on this in the courts. Uh, probably why that's, um, that's why some judges were transferred. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Is it another money minting venture? I mean, there's nothing done innocently in Kenya. Is there anything done bona fide or innocently? No. No. Yes. Everything is done after proper calculation of benefit cost analysis. Yeah. Yes. They're talking about six billion. I think it's something that can be done for a billion, probably. But I mean, this is Kenya, you know. Let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> let's move on, Mawaka. If the judges are as corrupt as Ahmed Nasir says or wants us to believe, the lawyers are the conduits between clients and judges. Judges hardly deal with clients except through lawyers. It takes two to tango. No, no, I mean, that may, I mean, uh, why, don't, why don't Kenyans wait for what we are coming with in Wajia Mata and then see who plays what role? Is it going to be explosive? Absolutely. Absolutely. How long should we wait? Two weeks, only two weeks. So end of this month? Yes, yes, yes. We will file our petition and then we will see how corruption, the anatomy of corruption in the Supreme Court. So let the chips fall where they may? Absolutely. Mm, mm, mm. Abdul Merlik asked the Grand Mullah his next move. The great people of Wajir are looking up to him. You know, I, I mean, I'm not from Wajir. I mean, I have no dog in that fight, really, apart from representing one of the clients. But I feel sorry for the people of Wajir. I mean, <laughs> they have judgments from one court saying that the governor is in office illegally. There is another judgment from the court saying that the governor is in office legally. And this is shows, you know, the conundrum we face when you appear before these courts. How can the Supreme Court say that he is validly elected? Then you have a court of appeal and the High Court that says that he is not validly elected. Mm. I mean, isn't that, you know, really what Kenyans are complaining about? You know, a court or a judiciary that's rudderless. <laughs> rudderless. These are text messages now, right? Coleman in Eldoret says... We have always been reminded that our current judges are beyond reproach at all times and that we should live with their judgments. So what should Kenyans do? Doomed. 
You know, I tell Ghanaians nowadays, if the Supreme Court has taken Uhuru's judgment in 2017, the most powerful Kenyan in this country, who is safe? Who is safe? <laughs> Nobody. Who is safe? Professor Guantai Mboroki says, Ahmed Nasir is as contradictory as the judges he is castigating. How can he hold that a person with integrity issues should sit in JSC? Who has no integrity issues in Kenya? Are you excusing it? No, no, I'm saying, I'm saying there are two, I, I mean, I don't want people to confuse, but these are two, let us make the point, let's, there's a distinction, eh? I mean, Ojende may have a problem with tax, but tax is about calculation, you know, and how much you should pay and how much is, and that is something that can be done very easily. Mm. But I think it's wrong for someone to say that Ojende should not represent lawyers because he has not settled his tax issue. Let me give you an example. When we were recruiting the Chief Justice last time, uh, Willie Mutunga, and certain sections in the Kenyan body politics do not want, did yeah. you know what they did? What? They went to KRA and they said, Willie has a tax issue. But Willie used to work for Ford Foundation, and Ford Foundation used to remit all his taxes. So how can he have a tax issue? So sometimes when the system doesn't like you, I mean the system is powerful. They will say that you have not paid your water bill, <laughs> or you have not paid NHIF. I mean, they can't... Yeah. They can't be an excuse. Yeah. Yes. They could think of anything. Anything. Alphonse Musimi, Grand Muller, where do you advise we begin in cleaning the Kenyan law system? First Muller, you know, there's no R, eh? <laughs> it's not Grand Muller. <laughs> where do you advise we start? At the top? No, no, no. You know, I mean, we had a good... Con but you see, Kenya, the Kenyan's problem is very big. I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of issues. There's a lot of... I mean, How about lifestyle audit? We write a good constitution, but you know, where do we come from? Yeah. I mean, we don't have the values we that forget the chapter six talks about. Yes. Leadership and uh, integrity. Yes, we forget. Is. Lifestyle issues. Audit. It's disappeared. Oh, people. This is a viewer with no name. If you were the head of JSC, what would you have done in regards to DCJ issue at hand? No, no, you see, I mean... You know, in terms of the judiciary, the most powerful organ is the JSC. And I think for the DCJ's issue, the first port of call should have been the JSC. The JSC should have investigated that matter. If they find there is enough evidence for the constitution of a tribunal, then they will advise the president. If not, they will dismiss. And I can tell you, I mean, when we're in the JSC, look at, look at uh, our first uh, DCJ, Nancy Paraza. I mean, we constituted a tribunal because the altercations she had with that lady mm -hmm. in a supermarket, we thought was grave to require investigation. We investigated it. We found her culpable. The president appointed a tribunal and it was dismissed. Now, when you compare that to what we are complaining about Wajir, I mean, that becomes nothing. Mm? That becomes nothing. Can't wait for that. Uh... I'll give you a special copy. Please. Yes. Maina Kageni says, Grand Mullah is extremely and brutally honest. If he was appointed to the judiciary, would he take it? No, no, I've said many times, you know, I will not. Because sometimes you are more... I was... <laughs> I tell... I like to tell guys, when I was chairman of the law society, the, the former chief justice, Justice Gishero, one day told me, Ahmed, you know, I want you to become a judge, you know. And I told him, you know, <laughs> who will make noise for you outside? <laughs> Who will make noise for you outside? Wanga from KAA wants to know uh, your opinion about the KQKAA merger. I've tweeted that about, uh, you know, I've tweeted many times. Yes. I think I was one of the first guys to tweet. Yes. That's a fraud, you know, it's a fraud. How so? Because KQ is dying. KQ is a private company to a certain extent. Kenya Airport Authority is a public body. They make about five, six billion a, month, a year profit. I mean, why do you want to give a company that makes profit to a company that's if KQ wants the country to bail out, they have to look for Naikuni first and bring him to court. And that's what I have said so many times. Mm. I mean, this, this, this uh, KQ used to be the bride of Africa. Yeah. Who made it the blight of Africa? <laughs> From the pride to the blight. Yes, yes. Who made it? The guys who made it. Where are those guys? You know, that's why we are saying, is this fight against corruption genuine? Because if it is genuine, 
I mean, there are many guys, you know, who have destroyed institutions that should have been taken to court. My, your friend, Mohamed Waliye, he says, tell my good friend, Ahmed Dasir, the Supreme Court of Kenya is the final court of appeal in this country. Even Baba stops at Skok. Can you explain how the judges that made the same ruling can review the same judgment? Actually, we filed today a uh, review. We respect the decision. Of course, it was wrong and a lot of things. But you see, we are when we go back to them, we are just telling them one thing. The judgment of the High Court that nullified the election for the governor has not been appealed from or set aside. It's for them to find a solution. That's why they're the apex court. And I will tell Willie that in Somalia, if he wants. <laughs> <laughs> tell him he's watching you. Yeah. Tell him. Yes, yes, I will tell him. <laughs> <laughs> Antonio Sol says, do you know that mullah in the streets means money? He wants to know how much you're worth. Mm. Is, um, tell him to contact me, I'll tell him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in the suit that costs so much. <laughs> Brioni. Grand Mula, it's been a pleasure. There, there's a lady who thought my suit was Chinese. Yeah. So, I, ch I mean, I wasn't bragging. I don't like bragging about it, but I just wanted to set the record straight. Yes. That it's not Chinese. <laughs> I saw the label there. I saw the label. Yes. Show me. Show, just show me. Show, show, show. They, they, you see? You see? <laughs> but I, I'm saying it's not just Chinese. Yeah. Yes. yes. Uh, and uh, I don't take that as an insult. Sure. Yes. <laughs> but you know, humor me. How, 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 how much? How much is it? <laughs> to a John in New York. <laughs> <laughs> Great Mula. We I mean, we follow your footsteps in so many things. You know. Don't worry. <laughs> Grand Mula, it's been a pleasure, my friend. My, my, my pleasure. Thank you privilege. so much. And by the way, you're growing your hair or something, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, last time you were Kipara Kidogo, now you're growing. <laughs> I'm just, it's, a, it's an observation. No, no, I think people understand it. I'm, I'm young, you know. I'm not, I'm, my hair is, this is my natural hair. <laughs> <laughs> you see? But a fee, at a fee, not for free, at yeah. a fee, yes. I can advise on this. <laughs> If a client comes to me and says, you know, Ahmed, yeah. can you advise me on this Kibara of mine? Yes. I'll open a file and I will advise. <laughs> and send the bill. <laughs> Folks, you've heard it straight from the Grand Mullah himself. What a man. He is just smoking today. I should have used my fire extinguisher, but I think we're out of fuel here. But thanks so much, man. My pleasure. Appreciate it. Awesome. Come, up, come back soon, huh? And this ruling, we want to see this uh, letter you're going to write. Yes, yes. Make sure. I've sent you a copy. Fantastic. And the petition you're going to file. Remember, folks, every Wednesday, it's all about those three letters on the keyboard, J, K, L, that follow each other. Nowhere else can you get a live interview. One-on-one. -on -one. <laughs> Not recorded. Okay. Live. I'll see you back here. All right. Hot 96 tomorrow morning from 6 a.m. to 10 a.m. on the hottest breakfast show in all of Africa. We call it hashtag Jeff and Hamo on Hot. We'll see you back here next week. Same time, same place. Thanks so much for watching. Goodbye, good luck, and God bless this great nation of ours called Kenya. <laughs>